There is a hormone that is higher in cultures that live longer. It's wild. If you look at the Japanese culture specifically, they have higher levels of sex hormones later in life. So for example, we hear about testosterone, we hear about sex hormones declining after like 35 or 40 years old. Well, that's not the same situation in some cultures. In fact, like cultures that tend to live longer also tend to have their sex hormones elevated later in life. So what is the reason behind this? And what is a sex hormone? Well, a sex hormone is gonna be like things like testosterone, things like estrogen. But in this particular case, we're looking at DHEA, okay? Dehydroepiandrosterone, which is a precursor to testosterone. So that's important for men and women because as a precursor, it is like an inflection point. A little bit of a drop in DHEA can have a huge effect on your testosterone. And when you look at the levels of functional decline, okay, usually the slower the functional decline, the higher the levels of DHEA. So that means it's the, the less that someone is declining, they tend to have higher levels of DHEA. Now when you look at these cultures that also have higher levels of sex hormones, there's one very important thing. They tend to be eating less. Okay, for example, like the Okinawans, they eat in a caloric deficit of about 15%. So they're always in a little bit of a deficit. So you cross-reference that with a study that took a look at rhesus monkeys, and it found that when they put rhesus monkeys in caloric restriction, they had higher levels of DHEA. So this hormone, whether we like it or not, seems to have a correlation with longevity. And it's also interesting because there's a correlation between, of course, DHEA, testosterone, and muscle mass. The more testosterone we have in men and women, the more muscle mass we can retain. There's a direct line correlation when our testosterone levels start to drop that we start seeing a decline in our muscle mass. And guess what? Muscle mass plays a very critical role in longevity. And that's something where you can look at larger scale epidemiological data and observational studies that demonstrate the reduced risk of all cause mortality when there is more muscle mass. So there's a few things that I want you to do. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm some dude on the internet, but I spend my days literally reading research and applying it as much as I possibly can. Okay, so number one, we need to try to periodically restrict calories. Whether that is through intermittent fasting or whether that is through consistent caloric restriction, have distinct periods of time in which you are restricting calories. People might think that if you put yourself in a deficit, you're not gonna produce testosterone and this and that. I think there's more to it than that. It's not about being in a deficit all the time. It's about occasionally being in a deficit to trigger a stress response that might allow you to actually keep these levels higher as we're seeing in this research. Another piece that is unbelievably important is keeping protein as a priority. Now, when you look at a lot of these longer living cultures, they actually don't consume tons and tons of protein, but there's other pieces we have to factor in. I'm not saying you go consume 80% of your diet from protein, but you really need to be getting it up a little bit more than most people are as they get older. Okay, I put a link down below for a company called Chomps. I recommend them. They're a sponsor of this video, but they are a grass-fed, grass-finished beef stick, but they also have turkey too. So you could use their turkey sticks and with like 60 calories, get a significant amount of protein and you can keep them in your car. I, I suggest this just because it's so much easier and better to grab something like a chomp stick, beef stick, turkey stick, than it is to get hungry and grab something that's like a refined starch. And I'll explain why this is super important in a minute. Because as we get older, we have to have this protein coming in. So that link is down below that'll get you a special discount. The stuff is delicious. My personal favorite is the venison stick, which is just a nice fatty acid profile. It's again, grass fed, grass finished, good quality stuff. That link is down below. Non-GMO project verified, no hidden nasties, no weird stuff. And they've supported this channel for half a decade. So that link is down below in the description for a special link. Another thing that we have to remember, which ties in with the protein, is we do need to reduce our insulin spikes as we get older. Okay, this is so unbelievably important. Okay, our mitochondria, that is the energy powerhouse within our muscles, right? Within our body. Well, not just our muscles, but in this case, within our muscles. The more that we exercise, the more mitochondria that we have, okay? The more mitochondria that we have, generally speaking, the better health we are, the better metabolism we have, okay? But we run into a pretty big problem.
If our insulin levels are always elevated because we're constantly bombarding ourselves with carbohydrates or we're not periodically reducing calories or we're not periodically fasting or we're not exercising enough, then we run into this issue where insulin is inhibiting something called FOXO3. And keeping this very basic, FOXO3 is what allows the adaptation to exercise and to stressors to occur. You know the saying, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger? Well, FOXO3 is what adapts to what doesn't kill us to make us stronger. So if we inhibit FOXO3 through constant spikes in insulin, like consistently grazing and not taking breaks between food, we actually slow down our ability to adapt to a stressor. You want to be strong and live a long time, then theory has it that you should, well, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right? Now, when we come back to the sex hormone piece, there's these links between more muscle mass, testosterone, and all this that we can draw correlational lines to. But there's also a piece that we forget about, and that is what is called aromatase. And that is what converts testosterone into estrogen. And as we get older, it's something we have to be aware of. Because if testosterone becomes more precious, and we run the risk of some of our testosterone getting converted into estrogen, not only is estrogen potentially going to make us store fat more, but it's also turning our testosterone, which is making us have muscle, into this not so good hormone. So one of the things that the Okinawans and the Japanese do a lot of is they eat a ton of mushrooms. So this is another link here. Okay, there's all these different things, but they eat a bunch of mushrooms. They eat a lot of shiitake. Okay, and shiitake has some benefits, but there's specifically studies that look at king trumpet mushrooms and the specific phytochemicals in them. So check this study out. This study was published in the International Journal of Molecular Science, and it looked at 10 different phytochemicals in mushrooms compared to something called aminoglutethamide, or AG. AG is a pharmaceutical grade anti-aromatase, a stage one anti-aromatase. So slow, it basically is what you would take to slow the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So they compared this. Basically, they found compound number two, so one of the uh, phytochemicals, ended up having matched effects as AG did. But one of them, compound number six in this particular case, ended up having 15% more of a benefit than even the aminoglutethamide did. And it's in a darn mushroom. So high fiber from the mushroom, maybe it's the fiber content and supporting what's called the estrobolone. Maybe it's the anti-aromatase effect. We can point our fingers at all different mechanisms, but we don't really know 100% other than the fact that it has an effect. So right now we're looking at exercising and building muscle. We're looking at maybe even taking 25 milligrams of DHEA to help support things since we see this correlational line there. Okay, I'm not a doctor, some guy on the internet. We see the protein consumption. We see the cardio and the way to improve mitochondrial density. We see the mushrooms, okay, we're seeing this, putting it all together. And the last thing that I wanna add in here to the mix, if you have access to a sauna or a cold plunge, these are things that can increase mitochondrial density and thereby can improve how the muscle utilizes fuel and gives you more overall ability to process fuel in general, leaving insulin levels potentially a little bit lower. So all these things you can factor in. But DHEA is clearly important. Our sex hormones are clearly important. So let's start putting our money where our mouth is and pay attention to that. I'll see you tomorrow.